another success story for you today. So I'm super excited to bring uh, another one of our many stories of osteoporosis success, which we're going to do more and more. Uh, but this is a fun story because it involves some really wonky imaging that I want to present because it presents a topic that we talk about a lot, which is REMS versus DEXA. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about how he is treating his bone health now, and we'll give you some of the details there. But overall, I really want to talk about imaging in this because it shows that it's really important to look at the details of imaging when it comes to improving bone health and potentially reversing osteoporosis. Okay, so first, let me tell you this gentleman's story. So this is a man, and I know many of you will say that you would like to hear stor stories about women, and I will present more stories about women, but this is such a fun case. So this is a 69-year-old gentleman who'd been diagnosed with osteoporosis in his 40s. He has had a journey. He has been on multiple drugs. He's been on anti-resorptive drugs. He's been on anabolic drugs. His bone just kept getting worse and worse and worse. He's had two diagnosed fractures, probably has two additional fractures. He's really been struggling with his bone and is really concerned about his future because he keeps having fractures and his bone kept getting worse. So came to join us and we did the things that we do. So we looked at his food. We had him track his food optimizing protein, optimizing gut function. Then we did the biomarkers, walk him through an exercise program, custom supplementation plan, talked about hormone optimization. And for him, this included testosterone. Now, this was a little controversial for him because he does have a cardiovascular history, but nothing in the past 12 months or really even recent history. So he was a candidate for testosterone therapy, which is going to be a big player here. And then he moved forward through the program. Now he repeated his DEXA recently and had a REMS before that. But his, again, his T-score kept getting worse and worse and worse. And I believe the lowest it ever was, was negative 4.3 T-score of the spine. Okay, so we're going to go through his most recent DEXA report, obviously just doing screenshots so you can't see his name or any identifying information. But I'm going to show you some screenshots of some of his documentation, obviously avoiding all of his personal information. And I'm going to start with his most recent DEXA report. Now, this is an example of a really crappy DEXA report. So they talk about his lumbar spine, his T-score is negative 3.9. Now, is that good? No, it's not good, but it's better than negative 4.3. Is it within the margin of error? Probably not. I didn't actually do the math on that, but probably with outside of that 2%, this is probably 3 or 4%. Um, I don't have the BMD from the 2023 study to be able to actually do that math, but it's improvement. And it's definitely headed in the right direction. So that's really helpful. If you look at his hips, his hips are actually improving to some extent. If I went back and showed you all of his old DEXAs, you could see that his hip and bone mineral density has actually been all over the place. Um, but these are not the biggest concern for him since his uh, hips are at negative 2.7 to negative 2.8, but his spine was at negative 4.3. Um, what's frustrating about these is that they actually did have the previous DEXA report and they actually comment on comparing it to the previous DEXA report, but then they don't actually tell you what they were and they don't actually tell you about an improvement. So you can see what they say here. They say their impression is that osteoporosis is the diagnosis and that there's a statistically significant increase in bone mineral density from prior study. Is that 1%? Is that 5%? Is it 20%? That'd be, that'd be good to know. What's also interesting is they go on to talk about in the up here right here where it says FRAX report. And they say that FRAX is not calculated as a patient has osteoporosis. What's mind boggling about that is that that's actually why we use FRAX is for a patient with osteoporosis to determine fracture risk. So whoever is doing these studies and whatever software is used to design this report is really substandard. But okay, let's move on and let's talk about his REMS. So when we look at his REMS, we've got his spine, which is what we're most interested in right now, right? So this is his REMS. What's really perplexing here is that his REM shows a T-score of negative 2.3. That's nothing near negative four, three, that's for sure. So this is a big difference. And then if you go on to look at his bone quality, you can see that here and the spine REMS bone quality is in the green. Now, does that mean that he doesn't have a problem? No. Like I said, he's had two fractures. So we know that he's had a mechanism that was, we'll call it moderate. It wasn't a low energy mechanism, but a mechanism that shouldn't have caused a fracture. I believe one of the injuries was from a deadlift. Now, I don't know how much weight, I don't know how his form is, but anyway, he's had a fracture. So you have to take all this stuff into context. So his DEXA looks very bad. His REMS doesn't look as bad, but he's had a fracture. So am I telling him, don't worry about your bone health? No, not at all. 
Now his hips also looked significantly better. So negative two and negative 2.1. So everything just looks consistently better on REMS for him than it does on DEXA. And we see that in some people, but not universally. So you can't always say that REMS is going to be better than DEXA. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. Okay. So you might be asking yourself, man, why is Dr. Doug showing me this guy who still has osteoporosis? This isn't a really impressive story. What's impressive about it is we took a gentleman who is 69 years old, not doing a lot from an athletic perspective because he's had fractures. He's very concerned about fracturing again. And we were able to turn him around without using drugs. So now he's headed in the right direction. I think that's huge. The fact that he's actually gaining bone mineral density is pretty remarkable. You know, when will he get to negative 2.5 on DEXA? I don't know, but he's definitely headed in the right direction and he has all the tools that he needs to do to continue to do that because that's the difference between using a natural approach versus using a pharmacological approach. And he's already tried that and it didn't work for him. It continued to get worse. So when I went back and look at this gentleman's chart, one of the things that really stand out to me is he's being very consistent when it comes to training and nutrition. He's hitting his protein goals. He's very active in making sure that he can get all of his supplementation. And he's on obviously a custom supplement stack. So I'm not going to read it off to you, but it includes some of the main players that we would see a multi-mineral. He's using the, the AlgaCal product, AlgaCal D3 complete. We did optimize his thyroid. He is on both testosterone and DHEA. He is also on a peptide and he's even using calcitonin, which is a not so commonly used these days, nasal spray that's really good for people that have bone mineral density specific issues in their spine, um, especially if they've had fractures, they still have pain from fractures. So it's a really cool tool to use there. So overall, all of these things are, are helping to present for him a metabolic state where he can improve bone. His bone turnover markers look fantastic. Again, he is on a great path. So just an example of someone who has turned around a pretty terrible story. This guy was really freaking out and now he's headed in the right direction. So this is an example of somebody who needed quite a bit of help, right? So they needed gut health. They needed custom supplementation. They needed the biomarkers. They needed the prescribing of testosterone, calcitonin, tesamorlin. So this is a pretty advanced case of somebody who was really struggling, who was doing everything under the sun, throwing the kitchen sink at their bone health. Now, not everybody needs that kind of support. So for people that are interested in doing it on their own, we have lots of support and resources for that. Our masterclass, our health span nation. For people that are struggling though, if you are on that journey where your bone is continuing to get worse, or you've been on the drugs, now you're off the drugs because you've been on them for too long and you are struggling, please hear me that there is hope. If you're struggling with your bone health journey, if you're continuing to lose bone, if you're scared about fracture, please reach out to our team. We can chat with you about your unique situation, give you more information about our program and whether or not it would be a good fit for you. Look for the link in the description on YouTube or join us at optimalhumanhealth.com under programs and you can click there for an appointment time to talk with one of our team members. So I wish you well on your journey. I'll see you in the next video.